as you know, risk and opportunity go, go hand in hand. So let's start with the big one, let's start with China. Um, clearly, the, there's a lot of regularization going on in China right now. So if I were a large international insurance company and I were selling policies out of Hong Kong or out of Singapore on the mainland, I would be cautious because I fear that there will be further insurance crackdowns, um, or regulatory crackdowns on the mainland relating to the capital outflow uh, control program, the corruption program and, 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 and others. So if I were selling large numbers of policies out of Hong Kong or Singapore, which are actually on the mainland, I'd be very mindful of that. Secondly, uh, obviously the Korean Peninsula remains, a, um, remains a, an issue of concern. We feel it's unlikely that a war would, um, would break out, but an accident uh, or an, accident, an accidental escalation, you know, it remains a serious issue. So from a political or military risk point of view, uh, clearly the Korean Peninsula is a, major, it is a major worry, however unlikely that it is to actually occur. Other places, um, the Philippines at the moment surprisingly has done rather well economically um, but the security situation down south in Mindanao and elsewhere has deteriorated. The president's policies of cracking down on, uh, on drug addicts and the rest have resulted in the deaths of over 7,000 people. Um, so whilst, as I say, this economy has continued to do well, it wouldn't take much for, um, uh, for a negative issue to occur. So we're watching the Philippines quite carefully. On the optimistic side, um, we think Indonesia, despite there's been some pretty negative publicity, in fact re represents a very exciting market for the insurance field. Demographics work for us. The, there have been two successful transitions of power, um, and I, I don't see any reason why, the, um, why they shouldn't happen again on this occasion. So uh, I've actually been involved in doing due diligence and other work for various companies who are actively involved in, in, in buying or acquiring or, or trying to invest in the market right now, both life and non-life. So Indonesia, I think, is a major opportunity. many markets that are, that are good. And remember, when it's risky, it's always good. I mean, Malaysia's had a lot of uh, bad press uh, over the corruption issue and, and, and others. The election is probably forthcoming. I, I predict that the, the or it, it, pun, most pundits predict that the existing prime minister will, um, will be re-elected. Um, the economy has, in fact, picked up. So despite some pretty horrendous challenges, I think Malaysia may offer, may, may at some point be, be a darker horse uh, for the future. Um, Vietnam is also very interesting, again demographically a lot of young people, a lot of opportunities. So actually, I mean across the region, India I suspect will be the one that is, um, if you could deal with the, uh, if you could rigorously deal with the regulations and the administrative environment, is also a terrifically uh, a powerful economy which is moving along with a lot of opportunities for the insurance, for the insurance field. So frankly speaking from the insurance perspective. Uh, Indonesia is positive, India is, is, is very positive. Um, other economies that are doing well, well Japan, uh, it's, a, it's a mature economy, but it's, again it's doing, is, is rather stable, more, more stable politically than it has been for, for, for very many years. Uh, again, so there's, there's quite a lot of good news around. Mm -hmm.